Now, uh, it's an opportune time to bring in RN Breakfast, Patricia Carvelis. Uh, Patricia, g'day. So it's been such a torturous process, but, but we are finally here. It has been, if you think about the long march towards it, in fact, over a decade of torture. And I think that's kind of a fair description of the climate wars. Look, I don't think the climate wars are over. No. But I think we're going to see a lot more debate on ambition and how far we should go. But it is a significant moment, this 43% reduction in emissions uh, that will be legislated and enshrined in legislation and the deal with the Greens that will enable that to happen. Uh, I think the Greens leader who spoke after we last spoke, Joe, so I'd love to provide some analysis on his speech. I thought it was a really significant speech from a Greens leader. He has done something, I think, quite extraordinary here. Consensus in his own party. Uh, not easy to achieve. A lot of strong views on this, bringing them together uh, to provide, I suppose, no roadblock. They will be voting for Labor's legislation, but at the same time making some changes and then talking about this being sort of round one. Yeah, that they. There's a lot of legislation down the track, huh? That's right. And he will use, he says, this is Adam Bant, the leader. They will use other levers available to them, including uh, negotiating on budget bills. They won't block supply, they say. So what you're hearing here is very grown up language. If I, I don't mean to be condescending, but from everyone, uh, you're hearing the language of negotiation. When Catherine Murphy from The Guardian, not our Catherine Murphy, but asked the question yesterday at the National Press Club of the Greens leader, about reflecting on the past and the way the Greens also have behaved. He gave a kind of a stock standard answer, but then he said what he's learned is that you've got to give a little. And what we're seeing play out on the parliamentary floor, literally imminently, in the next half an hour, you're going to see some of those votes with the amendments and then this legislation will eventually pass the lower house, then go to the Senate where it will uh, eventually clear uh, because the Greens have given it support. It will be a significant moment for Australia to enshrine this in legislation. Which brings me to the coalition, because I think the coalition are playing this very interestingly, right? OK, they're not voting for this legislation. Uh, that's a pretty significant uh, thing, decision to make after the message that was sent to them loud and clear, unequivocally, from the electorate. But I spoke to leading moderate and shadow foreign affairs spokesperson Simon Birmingham about the legislation. He says the reason he's not voting for it is it's not necessary. And, and to, to be clear, even Chris Bowen has previously said, you know, yeah. they can do this without the legislation, although it does send a very significant message to the market. So legislating does matter still. But this was Simon Birmingham's response. Do we have him? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not hearing anything okay. at all on that front. I so saw, I'm presuming I saw that the news don't. channel play it earlier, so I yeah. know you've got it somewhere there. One day you'll play it. It'll be great. <laughs> what he essentially says is that he would vote for it in a heartbeat if it was absolutely necessary sending the signal that he does think that it's an important piece of legislation, yeah. like he thinks it's an important ambition and that the coalition will be more ambitious in the midterm targets, which is, you know, a big, big signal, big flex from the moderate leader that uh, he knows that it's clearly a big issue for the electorate. Bridget Archer, who had revealed on RM Breakfast last week that she was going to cross the floor, will cross the floor. I put this again to the leading moderate and he, he didn't condemn her. He said she's, yeah. you know... But basically um, giving her some level of uh, support and for, for having the right to do that. But and Patricia, look, who, who yeah. else should we... Because we're probably going to be taking some of this live over the next couple of hours. Who else should we be looking out for to cross the floor apart from Bridget Archer? I think she might be the only one. OK. Uh, but, but, but until it happens, some people... Like, think about when uh, the other legislation the, the last year on, yeah. um, on trans and gay kids... You remember that? Gosh, yeah. that feels like a million years ago. But when the coalition was still in government, there were a few that crossed the floor then we had no idea would yeah. cross the floor. So watch, watch that. I, I don't like to predict the parliament because things do happen. But at this stage, she's the only one that's, like, being clear that she'll cross the floor. And the moderates, including Simon Birmingham, and feel like they've got to win. Um, not everyone would necessarily agree, but they feel like they've got to win because they've got a commitment from their leader, who is a Conservative, that they will have more ambition in their promise leading up to the next election and a different tone on climate. 
Either way, this is a big deal for, for Australia today. It's a big deal for the Labor government. And I know it's rare to find a win-win, but I do think that both for Labor and the Greens that there is some ground to say that they've had a victory, uh, particularly for the Greens to show that they're good negotiating partners, but that they still want to stick to pushing their points, particularly in relation to a moratorium on giving money, essentially, and giving the go-ahead to gas and coal projects. Yep. OK, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it there. That's Patricia, okay. but always great to get your perspective. See ya.